video, we talk about revising a classic, or more specifically, my mods to the Cold Steel Roach Belly. Now, let's jump into it. So whether you find this a classic knife because of its old world pattern or just because it's been around for a few years, this has certainly been quite a nice knife ever since Cold Steel introduced it. It's been widely received positively and really well accepted. And that's because for the most part, it's a really great knife, especially for the price point. Now, if you guys haven't checked out my review on this video, or <laughs> video, the review on this knife, I would highly encourage that. I did it a few years ago and the style's a little bit old for me, but nonetheless, I show it being batoned, you know, and what it will do feather sticking and bushcrafting wise, and show you guys that for the like 12 to $10 price range, of this knife it actually is a very good performing knife especially if your bushcrafting style is a little bit more in the hunting and processing of game animals if you're doing more of that stuff this is a really great knife because the 4116 Krupp steel it's made out of really complements uh, or is really good at corrosion resistance. However, there are, like with all good cheap things, a few downsides to this knife that I tried my hardest, <laughs> at least with the tools I had, to um, better. Now, going forward, I would probably switch up a few things, but not much. So, starting off with the first thing, and I'm going to be rolling in clips of the mod process, but it's really pretty self-explanatory. Now, this is the thing that I would probably do differently going forward, but I wasn't really sure how to approach um, this because I really don't work with a lot of plastics aside from Kydex, but the thing I did, and for anyone that owns a roach belly, the traction on the handle is horrible because they tried to mimic a faux wood plastic handle on these knives. Um, it's, it's really terrible in the way that there's very little traction. It's not very grippy. So what I did was I took my Dremel and there's this kind of uh, router looking bit uh, and I just went through and basically just cut, as you guys can see, just, you know, cut all the way around it and it's a little sloppy and once again the router bit probably wasn't the best choice because it left a lot of rough plastic that I'd end up scraping off and I actually went back through with a polishing bit and polished it to the best of my abilities now like I said it still looks a little rough so I will say aesthetically uh, aesthetic wise aesthetically this knife isn't the best looking handle wise but I will say functionality I still succeeded in making a very grippy handle and it's still quite comfortable even though it looks like crap but that's the one thing I would change going forward but you know you learn something new every day so that's the first problem that I tried to fix and I think that I fixed like I said from a utilitarian or functional standpoint uh, I definitely did so the next thing is from a bushcrafting standpoint this knife suffers in a couple ways on the blade tang itself the first being that because it's such a thin blade stock as I hopefully you guys can see there um, the jimping that's put on this knife from factory is really painful to uh, use for any length of time whatsoever just because the blade stock is so thin that when they cut the jimping naturally it's like putting your thumb on very thin pieces of metal it really hurts and they're like pressure points so what I did was as you guys can see there I just ground them off and just took them completely away because like I said, I didn't need them. Now, one thing I did do, and once again, this is going back to functionality over aesthetics, is that I did leave a little bit of a dip here, and I kind of like that dip. It feels a little bit more natural for me to just rest my thumb in the dip as opposed to making more of this spine uh, naturally lower. Uh, to compensate for removing the jimping. So the ne next and last point of modification that I did to this knife was that I uh, made it a 90 degree uh, bevel on this about from here to here. So after I ground the, uh, so after I ground the um, jimping off of there, I just flattened it out so that you could strike a ferro rod off of the back of the spine, which is another pretty important thing for bushcrafters. 
So those were a few, uh, the three primary uh, things that I did to the knife to make it better as far as the knife goes. This is still a fantastic knife. It's just that it needed a few things to be really up to par for bushcrafting. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and looking at some of that um, modification footage. That's really all I have to share. And as always, God bless and I'm out.